Basketball is one of the biggest sports in the US and across the world, with NBA games bringing in over a million viewers on average per game, and March Madness being one of the most highly anticipated sporting events of the entire year. As fans, we're so used to watching these games at home, getting the best replay looks and reaction shots, all broadcast right to our TV, phone, or computer. What most people don't actually think about, however, is how these games are actually packaged and produced for all of us to see live at home. There's a ton that goes into this process, but today we are going to specifically be taking a look at camera positions, the action they capture, and how directors most commonly number them. My name is Kyle Hines, and other than being one of the owners of Keystone Production Network, I've been a professional camera operator for sports broadcasts for over five years and basketball is one of my favorite sports to cover. So let's take a look at some basketball camera positions. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, let's keep in mind that every broadcast is different. Depending on the league, the conference, the budget, the size of the show, there's a lot of different elements that come into play that determine how many cameras are used, where they're positioned, and things like that. But this is just meant to give you an idea of kind of the standard camera positions that you'll see and how they work in a basketball broadcast. So we're mainly gonna be focusing on the essential camera positions, but then we'll also take a little bit of a dive into some additional cameras that can be used to increase the quality of a broadcast. Camera one, gain. So let's start off with the most essential camera in every sports broadcast the game camera. In almost every sport, the game camera is designated as camera one. The game camera, which is often shortened to game cam or simply game, is the camera most often seen by viewers during a broadcast. The camera operator will pan the camera left and right, covering the in-game action from an elevated centralized view of the court. The goal of this camera is to provide a wide view of game action. It's not only meant to show the ball handler, but the general flow of the game, the defense, and the ball handler's passing options. Game cam is often used as a fallback for directors, and this camera will rarely be given other camera assignments, especially on larger broadcasts. Camera 2. High tight. Now camera 2, which is referred to as high tight, is usually located very close to camera 1 on the primary camera deck near center court. During the game, high tight will follow game action at a much tighter angle than the game camera. Their shot will typically include the ball handler and the defender guarding them, but really not much else. This camera will rarely ever actually be taken during game action. It's just meant to be a replay angle that gives the audience a much better, tighter look at nice plays and other in-game action. During timeouts and stoppages in play, camera two serves as one of the primary storytelling cameras. This could involve getting reaction shots of an angry coach on the bench, excited fans in the crowd, or simply following a player that the announcers are discussing. As a camera operator, especially for a storytelling camera, it is essential that you're paying attention to what's going on in the game, the key storylines, and who the announcers are highlighting. The best camera operators are always getting the right shots before the director even has to ask. The last major responsibility for the high tight camera is what we call hero shots. Generically speaking, a hero shot or hero is a shot of a player that just made a key play. In basketball, this is typically the player that just scored a basket, but it could also be a player that committed or drew a foul, a player that got a steal, a block, an assist, or really any other key play in the game. The camera operator will then get a tight follow shot of this player, giving the director the option to cut to them live. Camera five, slash. So we're gonna jump around a little bit here to camera five, also known as slash. In terms of assignments, camera five is actually very similar to camera two, but is located here, off to the side, a little further down, and at an angle to the court. Also like camera two, camera five is responsible for following in-game action, but not quite as tight as camera two and not quite as wide as camera one. During stoppages in play, camera five serves as the other major storytelling camera, shagging shots that follow along with the storyline or simply capturing the environment of the arena. Also like camera two, Slash is responsible for hero shots. 
Typically before a game, the director will assign specific hero assignments between cameras two and five. For example, in the case of a foul, camera two could be responsible for getting the player that committed the foul, while camera five could be responsible for getting the player that drew the foul. Or in the case of a basket with an impressive assist, camera five might be assigned to go get the person who actually made the shot, while camera two is supposed to go get a shot of the assister. Assister? Not like a sister, not like your sister. The one who made the assist. Cameras three and four handheld. Now let's talk about my personal favorite, cameras three and four, the handhelds. Up to this point, all these cameras we've been talking about have been what we call hard cameras, which means that they're on tripods and they're not actually physically moving during the game. The handhelds are shoulder mounted cameras that most of the time are stationed here and here on the near side of the baskets. These cameras offer a pretty unique look at gameplay and are a great option for replays. These camera operators will typically be responsible for following game action during the game, but will have a little bit more freedom than cameras two and five as far as storytelling and hero shots, but that will also typically be decided beforehand by the director. During timeouts, the handhelds will be in the huddle getting shots of players and coaches on the bench discussing strategy, high-fiving, yelling at each other, whatever. The last major responsibility for the handhelds is announcers. Typically at the very beginning of the game during the open and during the halftime break, the announcers will have an on-camera segment where one of the handhelds or both of the handhelds will have to go over to the announcer's table on the far side of the court. So cameras one through five are pretty much all a necessity for basketball broadcasts. There are, however, a variety of additional cameras that can be used depending on the size of the venue and the broadcast. So most broadcasts will make use of small stationary cameras, typically referred to as Marshall cameras or simply Marshalls, which can be used as beauty shots in the corner that show the arena, or you'll often find them behind the backboards as dunk cams. Another option for these dunk cam looks that you often see are Robo or PTZ cameras, which will be remotely operated. There has also recently been a surge in the use of steady cams in the world of sports broadcasting. You may have noticed that when you watch Sunday Night Football, an NBA game, or pretty much any sports broadcast at this point, uh, you'll see a steady cam there with a more cinematic camera that gives a shallower depth of field and provides a really unique, cool, personal look to a broadcast. These are typically DSLR or mirrorless cameras that are put on steady cams or gimbals and are tasked with getting unique reaction shots during breaks in game action. And I will say these are another one of my personal favorite cameras to operate. And very often you will see additional hard cameras for larger broadcasts as well. This could be an additional slash camera that's positioned on the opposite side of the court or it could be ISO cameras that are assigned to specifically follow a certain player or coach. Another common addition is a reverse camera, which is positioned on the opposite side of the court from the other hard cameras. Uh, one of the main reasons that this will be used is, for example, at the University of Alabama, where I worked and went to school, uh, their benches are actually on the near side of the court. They're one of the few teams that do that in the country, but that is a very good reason to have a reverse camera so that you can get looks of players and coaches on the bench that the other hard cameras would not be able to get. So I know this was a lot of information, especially if you don't know much about the world of sports broadcasting, but hopefully this video gave you a little bit of insight as to how camera operation works for basketball broadcasts. If you have any questions about this video or my personal experience as a professional camera operator, make sure you drop those in the comments below and also let us know what sport you want us to cover next. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you next time.